Hello YouTube, this is Carrie, and the reason I'm making this video today is because if you've seen the video that I made about the therapist letter and how I called that the most important piece of paper I'll ever hold in my entire life, well today I might actually have one that's even more important. So, here we go. My official declaration of gender change form from the Ohio BMB, and as you can see, Signed by my counselor, Deborah Ornowski, Gabriel Group Counseling, with basically that form officially certifies, saying, my professional opinion is that the applicant's birth gender is male, gender identification is female, gender change is complete. Signed, Deborah Ornowski, April 2nd, 2014. So, as of April 2nd, I am officially full-time. And, yay, <laughs> and, you know, basically I've now sent in the form to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, and it'll take seven to ten days to get back. I just sent it out today. It, I actually needed to hold on to it so that I could bring it to my first job interview just in case they ask questions. Because, so, you know, I had to apply under my legal name. My name change hearing isn't until May 22nd, so it's a bit iffy in terms of that at the moment. But nonetheless, I am now officially full-time, which means I am presenting as female full-time. And frankly, this that I'm wearing right now is about as androgynous as I get. <laughs> so, um, so I want to talk in this video about, you know, well, in my previous video I talked about how I was kind of afraid of going full-time and, you know, about how there were a lot of things potentially holding me back in terms of whether I was ready or not. So in this video, I wanted to talk about what it was that finally convinced me that I had to. So, basically, after getting fired from my job at the Golden Nugget, I had a decision to make, and it was a similar decision to after getting fired at the Horseshoe. The question was, do I, you know, I'm not completely ready to go full time. I feel like, you know, I'm not completely, unquestionably female yet, and I'd be afraid of people accepting me. So. The question was, do I interview for jobs as Carolyn Elizabeth, or do I once again interview for jobs as Charles Joseph? And this time, there's actually something that happened that convinced me, you know what, I cannot interview for another job as a guy. I had to make the switch. And <clears throat> basically what it was is that my ex-girlfriend called me and she essentially told, you know, we got talking about jobs because she just got fired from her job too for a reason I won't talk about. But basically I started talking about potentially applying for my job at the Horseshoe back because it had been six months since my termination date. And then I realized, oh shoot, my Ohio gaming license still has my old picture on it. And... Jenny had the audacity to tell me, oh, it'll be fine. You you haven't really changed that much. Ow. <laughs> so, um, you know what? I feel like I need to get the picture just to illustrate a point here. But, oh, shoot, it's in the car. Never mind. Um, but anyway, I kind of realized, you know what? The thing that had been holding me back for all these months was worrying about will people accept me? You know, if I make this switch, will people be able to accept me as a girl? Or, you know, will they just always see me as this freak that, you know, they knew as a guy? And I was always wondering, how am I going to be treated by these people? Because they know someone. And now I'm expecting them to know that same person as somebody else and somehow accept me as you know, a girl and not be offended when I use the bathroom with them and all these other things. So just having that stigma of doing it with people who already knew me as a guy made it that much more difficult in my mind. And that was what was giving me the most doubt. And I realized, you know what, I cannot start another job like this, you know, in, still in hiding and introduce myself to yet another group of people as Charlie and then have to go right back to this, you know, just mental freak out mode about, you know, can I do this? How are these people going to treat me? And, you know, I realize I can't do that. I have to just make the switch, introduce them to myself as my true self 
and then all of that worry will be gone and they will be dealing with me as I am and you know I also realized that I could not move back in with my ex-girlfriend even though I'm still paying for half of the apartment that we're on the lease together with you know I realized I can't move back in with her because it's just too much of my old life too much of that stigma of people who knew me before too much of you know that's really what it is when you're around people who knew the old you they're always going to see that self and even if they're supportive and even if they're accepting they are always going to see that old self and there's always going to be slip-ups and mentally I'm always going to be thinking you know in my you know I'm used to relating with them as my birth gender rather than my identity gender so you know I'm always going to be associating them with my old life and I'm always going to be embarrassed to do feminine things around them and I realize I cannot put myself through that again whether I'm ready or not you know I'm still not completely confident in my passability but you know I realize whether I'm confident or not I've got to do it and get it out of the way otherwise it's never going to happen otherwise I'm always going to be stuck in the past otherwise I'm always going to have that stigma of being around people who knew me before and I knew I had I had to just let it go I had to officially start a new life in a new place with a new job as my identity gender so that people have only ever known me as Carrie instead of as my birth gender and you know it's so easy to be around people who have only known me as a girl you know I can relax it's like you know I don't have when I wear feminine things I don't have to worry about them you know thinking that it's weird it's just what they expect of me and you know and I've noticed that, you know, people who you first meet who have only ever known you as that self, that's the self that they see. So, you know, it, it's, and it's hard for them to imagine you any other way. So, you know, in a way, you know, when you're trans, you just, even if people know you are trans and you first meet them, there's not the same stigma because, you know, that's the only way that they've known you. So they get to know you that way and they accept you. You know, there's none of that change stigma where you, they know one person, then they have to adjust to getting to know this new person. So, yep, that is the decision that I made, you know, whether I feel like I'm ready or not. And I do still kind of get standoffish treatment from a few people sometimes, you know. I have been gendered female consistently for the last month and a half, ever since my last video. I've only been gendered male once. And it was while I was wearing a men's t-shirt because that was the only, like, gardening outfit that I had. But that was the only time that I'd been gendered male in a month and a half. Today, I was out shopping. I was gendered female twice. I actually stopped in to say hi to my former co-workers at Walmart. And one of them, I w you know, I was in the self-checkout line. And the woman that was running the self-checkouts, you know, was one of my best friends when I worked there. And... I actually talked to her briefly, not about myself, but just like any customer would. She didn't recognize me. She never, like, looked at me and said, do I know you or anything? She just did not recognize me, even though she knew me so well for the year that I was working there. And when I talked to my old supervisor, she did a complete double take, and she, and she was like, oh, wow! And, you know... <laughs> you know it's like I am being gendered female so you know I feel like it's at least worth going ahead and changing the name changing the gender marker so that it matches with what people see it's come to the point where every time I have to present my old ID and my old name it causes people severe cognitive dissonance and you know they like give, give my ID a sideways look and then I have to explain it to them and you know, applying for jobs, I have to do that, and it immediately outs me as trans as soon as I apply. Um, I've kind of gotten mixed signals on whether people think I can be stealth or not at this point. Like, again, some people seem to notice, other people don't, so it's kind of a mixed bag. But still, you know, I feel like once I have the name change, once I have the gender marker change, I won't be obliged to disclose to anybody anymore. Because legally, I will be female, and my name will be Carolyn Elizabeth, last name withheld. And, you know, 
people can't question me on it because legally that's what I am. So, you know, it just reached a point where I realized I had to move on. And for the most part, ever since making the legal switch, things have been pretty good, you know. I actually got to do an outing with my mom and my uncle for the first time in girl mode, and they took me shopping, and it was just so gratifying to hear them use my preferred name and preferred pronouns, and, you know, my mom actually called me her daughter for the first time, and, you know, my uncle called me his niece for the first time, and uh, it just felt so good. It's like... Normally, social interactions actually drained me, you know. It's like after being at a family gathering for a while, I had to step back and, you know, like gather myself because it actually kind of took away my energy. And, you know, it's just like after all day of, you know, mom taking pictures and me hating how I looked and my uncle giving me lectures like, well, you see, you're a young man now and you got it. And it's like, no, Joe, I don't, I don't like that. But I couldn't say anything before. You know, now they're finally treating me as the self that I have always felt I am and that I've always felt bad about not being treated as and not seen as. And, you know, everything socially is so much better. You know, I'm Carrie to everyone now and I'm a girl to everyone now. And I never have to have my gender identity invalidated anymore. You know, it's like I don't have to put up with being quarantined with the guys and feeling like I'm stuck there. And, you know, I don't ever have to hear the name and pronouns that I don't identify with. And I, my mind just never gets knocked back down into that self-defeating, oh, I hate myself mindset where I need to, like, get away from the action and re recoup. Now social interactions actually fill me with energy. You know, I enjoy them. I like talking to people now. And... Ugh, that just feels so good, you know, every time I think about it after one of those social outings and I realize that I'm not drained of energy anymore, I'm filled with energy and, you know, I want to talk to people again and be social again. The only bad thing thus far is that I still have a hard time mentally accepting myself as female, like, because I'm still not completely confident in my passability, like, I feel like an outsider still, you know. I feel like it'd be an issue if I tried to, like, join women's groups or something to truly help myself assimilate, you know. I feel like there's a lot of the socialization that I don't have yet that I need to get, you know, in more female-specific spaces and, you know, kind of like teenagers in high school, you know, learn the social cues and all that. But... I kind of have an issue with feeling like I'm not passable enough, feeling like I'd kind of be tr treated like an outsider and, you know, it's like, I feel like I come across as female to people, but kind of like a tom, a very tomboyishly lesbianish, blunt female, so, you know, it's, I still don't quite get the inclusive treatment that I'm hoping that I eventually can get, and i got to work towards that, you know. I'm not sure if that'll come with more time or if I just need to jump in there and get over my inadequacy problems, but that's pretty much it is, you know, it's just inadequacy still. And, you know, eventually, you know, once my hair grows, maybe once, you know, my face is feminized a bit more and once I have more boob and more hip, um, you know, I, I'll feel a bit better. You know, right now I, I kind of still feel like I'm teetering on androgyny, but you know, it's official, I'm full-time, so things are going in the right direction, and I'll continue to update. Bye!